Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello and welcome to our series uh, Islamic Finance. This is episode number six. We talked about the concepts uh, of economics in Islam, the components of the financial deals in our religion, the principles that guide Islam's view on the issue. Uh, we talked about Islamic banking versus the uh, traditional banking and the fact that Islamic banking concentrates on uh, real risk management on mudaraba and murabaha and not interest and uh, focuses on real guarantees when it gives you loans and focuses on production, uh, loans for production rather than loans for consumption and, 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 and much more. And here in, in this episode uh, uh, with Sheikh Shadi Suleiman uh, from Sydney, Australia, researcher in the field of uh, Islamic economics, we're going to be talking more about uh, Islamic financing and, 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 and how we as individuals can benefit from uh, uh, Islamic banks to buy a house, to buy a car, to have our own small uh, enterprise or uh, 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 project. And, and what happens in the case of, uh, of default and what are the duties and, 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 and um, uh, rights of, of each party here. Sheikh Shadi, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, thank you for your insight so far. We're looking to, uh, forward to hear more from you. And here we're talking about, you know, finan the uh, financing uh, for individuals. I want to buy a house. I want to buy a car. And you're telling me don't go to, to the banks because they, they give interest and this is uh, haram. And sometimes you're going to tell me don't even go to the Islamic bank because they don't work according to, uh, uh, to Sharia. And, and this might be the case in, 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 in many uh, cases. And sometimes Muslims are so confused uh, because they hear some of their scholars say that even the non-traditional uh, system of banking is halal. So, so, what shall we do? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. Brother Muhammad, you mentioned very, very good points here. And inshallah, we'll take point by point. Now, obviously, in the um, Western world, Muslims who live in the Western world, uh, they have it a lot more harder and a lot more tougher in the Muslim world, in the non-Muslim world than the, what they have in a Muslim world. A lot of the Muslims live in the Muslim world, maybe they do have that facility of trying to uh, finance themselves through an Islamic bank, through an acceptable mean or an th acceptable way of uh, that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Sharia. One of the things that really impressed me is how a bank will buy a complex or build a complex and then they start selling those complexes to people over a period of 20 years. And that's the most common one that you have these days. And that's a very good idea, which there is no uh, doubt in it if, if it's done, of course, in accordance to the Sharia way. The bank owns it and the bank sells it. Now, um, the common way that you find people when they want to buy a house, for example, or buy a car or buy whatever they want to buy, they will go to the bank. They will go to the bank. And uh, they want uh, $100,000 to buy this house. So what the bank does, the bank gives them $100,000. So what did the bank do? The bank gave them money. In return, that they pay back that money to the bank with an extra at the top. Mm. So this is riba. Mm. This is riba. Mm. This difference between if the bank owns that house mm. and says, look, I want to sell you that house of $500,000 in a period of uh, 25 years. There's nothing wrong with that. Why? Because what That's you've exchanged... What you, ex what you exchange with the bank is that you bought a house with money. But the common thing is that you take money and you return money. So you've taken $100,000 from the bank and you've returned to the bank $150,000 in a period of 25 years or 20 years or whatever number of years that you've done. This is where riba is. Mm. This is haram. Mm. If I take $100,000, I must give back $100,000. Mm. Regardless, of, even if it's after 20 years. Right. Some people even come up with the question, say, but the value of the $100,000... Mm, inflation Yeah, so 20 on. years ago is mm. not the value of it right now. The value of it now is probably 500000 still. Hmm. That's not an argument. Uh, so, so the no. idea is in the, in the, in the fixed, uh, fixed pricing and fixed As the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, gold with gold, silver with silver. Okay, but if the, if the exchange is different, I'm buying a house with money, then it doesn't matter how, how, exactly. how expensive or how much I pay for the house. Now, the best way is that the bank owns that. We mentioned before the murabaha. That's the best, easiest, simplest. Okay, I'm interested in buying a house. I'm interested in buying a car. I go to the bank, the bank buys the house, the bank buys the car, and then they sell it to me with an extra cost, uh, with an extra profit, 
over a period of 10 years or 15 years or whatever agreement to agree. And I put the house or the car as a guarantee that if I can't pay this uh, amount of money that they paid for, uh, they'll take the house or take uh, or sell the house or ta- sell mm. the car and then they take the profit and give me back whatever mm. is left. So this is the easiest way. Indeed. There's other forms. The other form is musharaka. Mm. And that's also common amongst the Islamic banks. Mm. Where, for example, I want to buy this house. And I've got, uh, the house is worth $100,000 and I've got $20,000. So I come to the bank. What does the bank give me? They give me the, op- uh, the, the offer of going as partners into this house. So I pay $20,000 and they pay $80,000. So I own 20% of the I house. I own 20% of the house and the bank, uh, the bank owns? 80. 80. Okay. Now what happens? Who's the owner of that house? It's the a bank. partnership. It's a partnership. 20, exactly. 80. Exactly. And the partnership... When Islam comes partnership, when Islam talks about partnership, partners must take a fair and equal, must take fair and equal just responsibility over what the upon is in. So I'm 20%, I must take responsible 20% of everything. Exactly. Okay. And, uh, and what the bank does is that you and the bank now are partners in this house. And what Islamic, Islamic banks mostly do, then they give you the chance to start buying their share over a period of 20 years. Mm. But where the downfall is of some Islamic banks that we've experienced in the West, they are your partners, but they don't take any responsibility as being partners. Mm. You pay, like for example, in Australia, we have something called stamp duty. When you buy a house, you pay tax. The bank tells you, you pay the tax. Well, you are my partner. You should be also you should pay pay 80% of the stamp. Yeah, so don't tell me we are partners in one area, right. not partners in another area. Okay, yeah. if there is something happens to the house, then you are also my partner. Mm. Okay, so the musharaka, the musharaka is uh, another common thing that happens with the Islamic banks that they go in uh, with you, they enter with you a uh, a contract as they as they are your partners, take full responsibility as your partners, and uh, also you, if you're gonna live in that house, you'll be paying your partner rent mm. because if if I am the bank, I've got eighty percent share in this house, and you've got twenty percent, mm. and we've got this house. And we rent this house for two hundred dollars a week. Hmm. Then I, I, I've got the rights to get one hundred sixty dollars a week. Exactly. So what the ba- Islamic bank he tells you, look, you pay me one hundred sixty dollars a week rent because that's eighty percent of the, of, my, of the my fair right. value of the weekly. The other twenty percent, that's your business. What you, you do with yourself. it? You pay yourself. You pay yourself. You get it off someone who rents the house. That's. Hmm. Uh, hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm a partner. So what the bank gets, they get the rent, and also they give you the chance to buy a share hmm. every year. For example by 5%, mm. and then you become 25% owner. And they are the ones that define the, yes. the, 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 the share is, they, they, see, they will give you? Yeah, that, okay. this is something that you agree with them morally, okay. Okay? and the bank accepts that because it's their interest. So year by year, you start buying a percentage from them. And, and, and in the middle, you can both parties could agree to you know, accelerate or decelerate. Of course, that's the rights. Right. That's the rights of partnership. Mm. That's the rights of partnership. Mm. So this is one form. Now, and this obviously, is ac- acceptable. Of course, in the, in the it's acceptable. It's, a it's simple. It's, a it's No, it's musharaka. It's musharaka. Partnership. Partnership. Okay, partnership that me and the bank went into. Me as the customer and the bank, as the financial holder, has got the money. We went together as partners buying this property, and then uh, dealing as partners, Understood. like a partnership. And slowly, I start buying my share, because what's my problem? My problem is. It's not that I don't have the money. I have the money, but I need 20 years to get it. Exactly. So I'm getting paid wages every year, and I need to so pay the money. So what happens in the case of death, then? Okay, in case of death, obviously the partnership breaks, and it goes, past to, it goes to the is, the inheritors, those who inherit. Mm. But yeah, obviously, what if the inheritance can't... Uh, then they break the partnership, and they, and the, and and the they portion, get what they pay. The portion of their father or right. whoever right. they inherit get, mm. goes back into the mirath. Mm. Yeah, so this is a simple way. But I want to mention something. Like I come from Australia, for example. Uh, what's sometimes a problem that uh, the actual legislation, the state legislation or the government legislation does not facilitate that freedom for you to do those things sometimes. Mm. You know, This is one of the problems that you find in the Western countries. Even though the Islamic banks want to implement that, but the actual uh, legislation of the country, the, uh, the constitution. We've seen the, some governments yeah. that want uh, you know, more elements of Islamic banking yes. uh, in their countries, but parliaments, indeed, in those countries, mm. preventing that. We've yes. seen the, and like Australia France, is, for instance. No, Australia is one of those who are very, very eager into mm. introducing Islamic finance into the country. Mm. And they've changed some of their legislations mm. to, to be fit. 
So Parliament the, ha has yeah. acted. Yes, the acted unlike France. By yeah, the way. yeah, like you know, uh, they they did change some uh, some of the legislations on constitution to fit to fit, mm. and they still need to do more. Mm. But as I mentioned, like you know, sometimes it's not easy to do within Western countries or maybe even Muslim countries due to the you know e economical uh, legislations that have in the government that does not allow them to do those things. Mm -hmm. you, you, you've just uh, uh, talked about financing a house. I, I, I guess, um, uh, if I, again, if I'm, a, I, I'm an individual, I want to buy a car, the same would can same easily go could, for, uh, for, for the car. Murabaha is one, right? Okay, that uh, I'm interested in this car. The bank buys it for ten thousand dollars, sell it to me for fifteen thousand dollars over a period of five years. That's Murabaha. Right. Or go as partnerships. I pay one thousand, they pay nine thousand. So I earn ten percent. They earn. 90% uh, but we go in as uh, partners right. and then slowly I start buying my share from uh, the bank. Uh, obviously sounds easy but uh, there are some areas where when I say like when it comes to partnership we are partners. Mm. So you also are liable for all the losses and the profits. Exactly. Yeah, we sometimes some banks say, look, we are partners, but if there's a loss, you're the only one that loses. Mm. And that's where you find a, this is a big gap in the Islamic Sharia that does not accept that. Mm. We are partners, we are responsible. And that's exploitation. Yeah. And that would be a darar. Yes. Uh, or to, uh, yeah, you don't or bring harm. We, if we win, we both win. If we lose, we both lose. Exactly. Uh, now, what if I'm the borrower? I, I, I have an idea, a great idea, a small project that wouldn't cost much, but I don't have the money. So I, I borrow from the bank. I give them the, um, the plan or the budget um, study. And uh, uh, in that case, they can go in as, as partners with me. Okay, you've got two ways. Hmm. If I want to finance an, a project... I want to finance you know, an investment. You've got two ways. Either partnership, which means I have to put in some money, or mudaraba. Mm. Okay, partnership that I want to invest in this big complex is going to cost $1 million. I'll probably have $100,000. Okay, then the bank puts in $900,000 and we are both partners into mm. this complex, into this uh, project. Mm. So at the end of the day, the profit, 90% is going to go to whom? To the 900,000. It's going to go to the bank. Mm. And 10% will come back to me because mm. we are partners. Mm. Or go as mudaraba. Mm. Mudaraba means I don't go in with my money, I go in with my talent. The, I need to build this project for $1 million. The bank gives me $1 million. I do not put in a cent. Mm. See, this is the difference between musharaka and mudaraba. Mm. Musharaka is that, I, that both parties put in money. Mm. Mudaraba means one party puts in the money and the other party puts in its the talent and, and, and experience. And the talent could be this party or that party. The bank it or, the, uh, see, uh, if, or the individual if, if, or the institution. If I, am, if I want to invest, invest mm. into a big project, mm. obviously it's going to be the bank that's going to be putting the money. Right. So the bank will put in the money and then I invest that money. And, right. uh, but we have a, to agree and on and the as a depositor, as a depositor in that Islamic bank, I should be knowing... Uh, which project uh, my money is being used in? When it comes to Mudaraba, if I am investing my money with you, you have to be very clear to me. We have to agree on two main things. Number one is the percentage of profit. And number two is you must be very clear to me where you're going to use this money. So if you're going to say, I'm going to invest this money into building, then you cannot go and buy clothing with it or go to China All and right. that. So All you right. have to be very clear. All right. Clear again. Uh, we'll, we'll be taking a, a, a break here and we'll be back for the second part of our episode with Sheikh Shadi Suleiman in a very short while. Stay with us. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once again, um, Sheikh Shadi talking about the, the means of uh, financing um, uh, in Islamic banking and how can uh, individuals and banks uh, 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 profit together and invest uh, together. You brought up a, a point that someone wants to invest. And, uh, you know, most, most of the times you've got the builders or businessmen who have the talent, have the yes. ideas, yes. have the contacts, have the connections, have the knowledge, mm -hmm. but they don't have the money. Exactly. Okay. As I mentioned, they could go in as partners with the bank. And both, that means that uh, the, uh, the, the, the customer must provide some money in, what, in whatever amount of money that is. Or they go in as mudarab, which means they take the money from the bank and they invest that money into that property. But there's two main things that must agree with the bank. Is number one, that must, they must agree on the profit, on the percentage of the profit. That means, uh, and could, that could be anything in agreement. Could be 10% to 90%, could be 50 to 50, whatever they agree. And the second thing is, 
that uh, this uh, consumer or this uh, the, the customer must be clear to the bank or to the investor that's investing the money exactly what they're investing the money in mm. and he's not allowed to do with that money what uh, he's not allowed to do with that money anything else anything than else the, than what he had agreed so mm. for example if he agreed with the bank that he's going to invest a million dollars uh, into property then he must invest into property he can't go and do business with it and thirdly of course uh, the, if there's a loss it's on both which means he lost his talent he can't say well i want money for my talent and uh, and the time that he's put for into that and the labor work they put and uh, the bank also loses the money so this is one form which is called a mudaraba and, um, and usually they would agree uh, on 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 the sharing of the burden of of the loss percentages as well no no they, see because there's no suppose if it, suppose if there is a loss we have to share it together the no, loss he don't, if it's mudaraba it's, it's only one party that invested the money the other right. one only invested talent so there's nothing for him to lose Mm. Okay, but if it's musharaka, then both, mm. both will lose in accordance to their percentage. Mm. And these uh, are two. And, and does the percentage of um, um, uh, the division of the percentages uh, in the case of a profit does it have to be the same division in the uh, in the case of the loss, or is it uh, uh, according no, no, to to an agree? To if it's agreement? musharaka, yes, the both lose and the both win according to their percentage. So if they win. That, uh, with the percentage, like if I've got 90%, I'll take 9% of the profit. If I've got 10%, I'll take 10% of If we lose, I'll lose 10% and the other one loses 90%. But with mudaraba, this, you only have one party investing money. The other one is, they are, the other party is not investing money, they're investing their talent. So if, the, if they lose the money, then it's going to be the bank that's going to lose the money, not the person who, who, who was using that money to buy and sell or to, or to do that project. And if they make a profit, then the profit will get into percentage according to the agreement from the beginning where the one who invested the money will take a percentage of or take a certain amount of money from the percentage and the other one who dealt with the money will also take a percentage. This is mudaraba. Mm. Or they could do wakala, and which means a commission, which means that uh, the bank will assign someone to do a job on their behalf. So the wakil will be more of an employee or more of a contract or an agent, which that's obviously, there's not much benefit for the agent to make much money on that. It's like he's more of an employee than uh, anything else. But the most two common one is uh, a sharaka, Part partnership, or mudaraba. That's the best way you could finance uh, someone who is in need of money. So that, like he's a bank financing someone who is in need of money to do a certain project or a business and so on. And obviously, we have this common problem that you have a lot of good Muslim businessmen, but uh, the only reason they're not producing and not uh, developing or not growing is because they don't have the money, they don't have the capital. And the only way they could get that capital is from the bank. But the bank gives you money and you have to return back that money with an extra at the top. And mm. obviously, it's not acceptable because that's riba. Mm. And some people say, but you know, I will use that for the good and I'll you know, become rich and start investing and start donating to the mosque. Again, we do mention the qaida, al ghaya la tabar wasila. You cannot uh, use a haram mean to get to halal. See, Muslims are confused, uh, Sheikh, because uh, some have heard um, fatwas yes. uh, saying that um, the traditional uh, way uh, uh, of nowadays banking is halal. And others have heard fatwas that even the, the Islamic banks are haram. So yeah. that they are... Really Look, confused. Uh, there's no doubt not all Islamic banks are in accordance to the Sharia. Okay? It doesn't mean that if a bank puts a banner or a sign in front of the bank saying it's an Islamic bank, it means an Islamic bank. There's a lot of Islamic banks. There's a lot of banks out there that claim to be Islamic and accordance to the Sharia that are very far away from the Islamic banks. I've experienced some banks. Okay? They call themselves Islamic banks, Sharia compliant banks, and all they do is get money from the banks and give it to you. So what did you do here? You just been a middleman mm. getting money from the bank Wakil, and giving it to me. Like, yeah, you know, like the and form like, you, you know, And uh, you've got some banks who are trying to do their best, but obviously, as I said, the regulations of the government legislation and the law sometimes makes it hard on them. And, uh, and uh, are Muslim governments, um, are, are governments of, uh, of Muslim countries, Encouraging Islamic banking, or do you think that you know they they are not giving it enough attention? There are some countries who are leading the world with Islamic finance, such as Malaysia, 
such as Bahrain, for example, Dubai or Saudi Emirates, Arabia. UAE. Like these are one of the leading countries mm. when it comes to Islamic finance, and mm. they are working and promoting that. Mm. One of the common things that you realize that uh, if you calculate at the end of the day when you take money from the Islamic banks or the normal bank, you end up being paying extra more with the Islamic bank than a normal bank. And a lot of people use that as an excuse saying, why should I go through an Islamic bank right. when the normal bank down the road takes less and at the end of the day I'm paying $400,000 than $500,000 through the bank? Right. Well, that's still not an excuse. There's well, well one usually this is not that. I mean, usually the uh, difference doesn't reach that much. Yeah, usually but, it's the difference of, you know, 7.5% or 7.75%. Yeah, but but if you like calculate that. it in some Western countries, like... Mm. Where I come from, it, it is a. It, maybe it, I'm talking about here. You know, yeah, the difference is the, the difference is significant. You're talking about maybe fifty to hundred thousand dollars sometimes, but the difference is one here, one is uh, pleasing Allah, the other one is uh, exactly. you know declaring one Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So I'd rather have patience in this world over what I go through than having patience in the hereafter. You know the the Sahaba radiAllahu taala anhum when they used to leave their houses, their wives would say to them, please. Only bring what's halal to us. We we'll rather starve in this world and have patience on that than having patience on the punishment of Allah. Subhanallah. So you know, sometimes life, you know, it's it should, it's not always that things should be so convenient and relaxing. Sometimes I need to struggle to please Allah Azza wa Jal. So I rather struggle through that than go through that. Another common one, like for example, sometimes you know, renting, you know, you end up paying rent. More than what if you've taken a mortgage or taken a loan that you pay your payments or repay your payments. And this is a common one. I rent a house, I'm paying $2,000 a month for renting a house. If I buy this house, my payments to the bank will be 1800 This is a common one. Then why should I, you know, as they say, I'm paying dead money to, you know, when I rent, when I could have my own house. Still, that's not an excuse. Yes, it makes sense in one way that, you know, you rather invest that money into a place that you know it's going to end up for you than, uh, uh, than uh, that money going somewhere else. But still, that's not acceptable. Going back to what you mentioned about the fatawa. Yes. The fatawa and the... the confused Muslims. Yeah, and the rulings that many scholars at this time and era, uh, I would not say many, but, you know, a fair number of them, which some of them are uh, renowned scholars, and prominent scholars that we know in the Muslim world gave the fatwa that you are allowed to deal with riba. And some of them even say the first house is acceptable. Some of them say the first house is acceptable. Well, I've spoken to the, some of those scholars. This difference between a scholar living amongst the West and knowing exactly what's happening than a scholar who's hearing about what's happening in the West. Some of those scholars are given the wrong information. Some of those scholars are told that we live on the streets and we've got nothing else and the only way that we could have a shelter above our heads is by going through riba. This is what some of uh, the scholars heard. So obviously the scholar looked at it from the point of darura. But the reality is in the West, where, where I come from, there's no one that sleeps on the street. And, if, and you, know, you could still rent. You could still rent. You know, the fatwas were not just for the West. There was also for here, for, uh, for, for the Middle yeah, East. So I'm it was basically a fatwa. Some fatwa said the traditional way of nowadays banking is halal. Yeah. So uh, I'm talking about some of those yes. scholars and those prominent scholars right. who mentioned that. Mm. But I know there's others who just said, you know, any form of riba yeah. or any form of banking, which is, of course... Well, of course, they no didn't doubt. say any form of riba. I mean, what, what uh, they any said form is... Of ba uh, any banking, go to any traditional bank or any modern maybe bank. I, I, of course, um, uh, um, uh, um, maybe they calculated the inflation uh, uh, rate or, or they saw that, you know, if you keep your money into the, the drawer, then it will be eaten up or... Nobody knows where, where, where that came from, but it, it, is, it is confusing Muslims. Yeah, it is, of course, when people start hearing that. But I still say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes it very clear that riba is haram. We know that this is riba. It's very clear from its action. It's very clear from its content. And it's very clear from its name. And we should avoid that, regardless whether you know, I'll be renting or moving a house every six months. At the end of the day, I'd rather struggle in this world mm. and not displease Allah Azza wa Jal then displeasing Allah and going to the hellfire or getting punished for the other billah. And this is not disrespecting any scholar or any sheikh or any imam who gave the fatwa that it is okay. But I, I, I still find it very, very hard to believe that uh, this is an acceptable way that uh, the sharia would allow someone to deal with riba because 
Riba is evil and the Allah did not declare war on any haram the way he declared war on riba and because it's so it's so uh, evil we should not get any riba in any way or form subhanallah right um i don't know if we only have one minute i i wanted to ask a question i hope we'll, we'll try we'll try the the guarantees again for the uh, loans i'm a regular person i have a great idea i'm sure it's going to succeed but i don't have any guarantee i go to the islamic bank what yeah. happens well, or the non-islamic one what, what well the guarantee is not a uh, a, a important or an integral uh, integral part of uh, the contract that's up to that's up to the lender mm. if i'm lending you money it's up to me to accept a guarantee or not i could lend you money without guarantee mm. so it depends on the islamic banks maybe the, maybe you know some islamic banks would not ask you for a guarantee but some most of them will always want to reassure that you mm. are you are able to pay that money back May, maybe they could judge that the idea is in itself a guarantee yeah. so the guarantee the rahan is not it could be an idea yeah i'm saying it could be but mm. the rahan the guarantee is not an integral part for the uh, for the uh, validity of the contract we could i could give you money without a guarantee okay. i could give five hundred thousand dollars and i'd not even ask you for a guarantee mm. that's up to the no, lender that's huge risk Th then that's up to the lender Hmm. It's up to the bank or up to the lender for them to accept. But what's important is that we write that. As the Prophet, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran al-Kareem, Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu, idha tadayantum bidaynin ila ajal musamman, faktubu, or those who believe, if you take a loan to a certain period of time, then record it. It is important that when we take a lend, whether we lend to someone or borrow money, we record it and document it and get two people to witness that. Subhanallah. Sheikh um, Shadi Suleiman um, uh, from Sydney, Australia, thank you very much and looking forward, uh, inshallah, to the upcoming episodes on the all important issue of uh, Islamic uh, finance. Dear viewers, until we meet again, do stay with Huda TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.